The Fish Day Fire, Origin of the Pocket Card. Hello, my name is Cabe Speary and I'm the Fire Environment Forester for the North Carolina Forest Service. Today I'm at the Croatan National Forest, standing in the footprint of the Fish Day Fire, which in May of 1994 burned over 27,000 acres. What you see behind me is a typical Eastern North Carolina Pocosin fuel type with a heavy shrub understory and a thin pine overstory. It may not look like it now, but under the right weather and drought conditions and at the right time of year, these fuels can burn every bit as hot as California chemise or Gamble Oak. The fire started on May 21st as a result of the arson burning of an automobile. The fire was difficult to control, making several major runs and escaping containment lines on three separate occasions. On May 26th, a tractor plow strike team consisting of a leader, four tractor plows with operators, and four crewmen were plowing a containment line on Division Indigo along the flank of the fire. Strike team members were all from Eastern North Carolina and had extensive experience in fighting fires and Pocosin fuel types. A sudden shift in wind direction and increase in speed turned the fire ahead directly toward them. Wind speeds were 20 to 30 miles per hour and flame lengths were 25 to 100 feet high. Members of the strike team were surprised by the sudden erratic fire behavior. All of them accepted that they would not survive as they were cut off from their safety zone. Then for a brief moment, the wind died down, the smoke cleared, and there was a break in the flames. Fortunately, every member of the strike team was able to make it into the black that they had created as required by NC Forest Service policy. They were shaken but alive with no serious burn injuries. In the fire review held a few months later, Gary Kershio, fire staff specialist with the North Carolina Forest Service, identified several factors that contributed to the fire blowing up. He stated that an adverse wind profile was present the day prior and predicted for the day of the near fatal event. In addition, critical fire danger indices were predicted, as was the potential for an afternoon sea breeze. Kershaw stated that information was available to FBA and meteorologists that conditions were extreme, but this was not communicated out to the field. Later in the review, it was noted that meteorologists assigned to the team makes no mention of any adverse winds in the shift plan, the IAP, and the FBA makes no mention of any serious fire behavior problems expected. Curcio discovered that locally important thresholds for firefighter safety had been surpassed. The all-time worst values for May at the Catherine Lake Rawls were recorded for ignition component, spread component, and burning index. In addition, fuel moistures were at critical levels with Catherine Lake and Pocosin Lakes showing 10 hour less than one hour. An adverse wind profile had occurred and the sea breeze front had indeed developed. Armed with this knowledge, Curcio pondered an improved method for relaying fire danger information to forces on the ground. He envisioned a tool that firefighters could use in briefings or in the field to make sense of the local forecast and current fire danger indices. The ultimate goal was to increase firefighter safety. He drafted charts of the significant fire danger indicators for the vicinity of the Fish Day Fire and shared this information with the National Fire Danger Advisory Group. After the Fish Day Fire, there was a concerted effort to communicate fire danger to firefighters more effectively. The concept of Curcio's charts fit directly into the National Fire Danger Technology Transfer Plan. This video has been brought to you by the North Carolina Forest Service, a division of the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Steve Troxler, Commissioner.